It's got more horses than Indy has laps. Big old treads like they stole parts off a steamroller. And the angriest scowl in the auto business. Oh, God, not that. Get out of here. That! Let's drive the 2012 Camaro ZL1 and check the tech. Now the ZL1 is pretty standard Camaro stuff in the cabin. If you've seen a Camaro, you've seen this. Nothing changes dramatically. You do get some mouse fur up here on the dash, and you get a cluster of gauges that's very complete. Oil pressure and temp volt gauge and your blower pressure coming off the supercharger. Right in front of those, Tour, Sport, Traction Control. These are the buttons you use to control the uh, ferocity of the drivetrain. Uh, which notice, though, because we have the automatic grown in three, two, right? You don't have launch control. Only the six-speed manual on this car has launch control for getting out of the hole as cleanly as possible. But it kind of doesn't matter because this car is two-tenths of a second faster with the six-speed automatic. No gate on it. You go back to drive or you go to manual. In manual, your paddle impulses stick. Now, this head unit is the head unit. You cannot get an LCD traditional navigation head unit in this top-end Camaro. Some will say, who cares? That isn't the point of the car. Others will say, it's the top-end Camaro. Give me the choice. I think I'm in that camp for the most part. Your entertainment choices are AM, FM, satellite radio. No HD radio in this guy. Auxiliary jack, CD drive right here. Or you can stream from your Bluetooth phone as well, but you're not going to get any meta tag information, just audio playback on here. It's pretty rudimentary. Now, of course, since you can't see a map there, you're thinking, what, no nav at all? Well, yes, you've got the OnStar directions and connections. That's a plan you subscribe to. Hit the button, talk to the operator, which is now automated, and they'll feed you rudimentary directions on here and on this center display. Now, I just find that using OnStar for navigation is really cumbersome. I don't want to talk to the operator, shoot me. And if I'm talking to the automated system, all too often the thing rings and doesn't pick up like four times today alone. Then you've got a language issue. Here in California, lots of streets have complicated Spanish-based names. Maybe you're in one of the parts of the country with American Indian-based names. It doesn't get those things well. Sepulveda and Isapaqua just kind of make it nutty. Now, the last thing to notice about this car, if you haven't already, is the fact that it's kind of like driving a tank. High belt line, low roof, you got this gun slit you're looking out of, aka the windshield, and the car feels very tall and square when you're in it as well. This all adds up to something kind of disconcerting to me, but that's a matter of taste. Oh, thank you, Chevy, for doing the speedometer right. So many cars today go to 200 miles an hour on the speedo in a tiny little arc that means you can't tell 50 from 60. It's like a couple needle widths. Here, they spaced out the reasonable speeds, see that? And then took all the ones you're never going to do and compressed them over on the right, finally. Oh, one more give back because we don't have a color LCD, we don't have a good home for the rear view camera. As a result, it lives up here on the left side of the mirror, filled with chromy glare. Didn't really work for me that well, though it does have trajectory prediction, which is kind of slick for a little guy like this. Aside from BMW, this may be the best head-up display in manufacture right now. It'll show you any combination of speed, G-force, Entertainment currently playing, next navigational direction, a lot of good stuff in there with four different menu pages, adjustable height, and brightness. Now herein lies the heart of the beast. This is your 6.2 liter supercharged V8. You probably don't need to know much more than that, do you? But I'll continue. 580 horsepower, 556 foot-pounds of torque. Good grief. Zero to 60 is a little under four seconds, though who cares? This is more like a zero to 100 car, car, rocket. Now, you only get 1218 MPG in this configuration. That's pretty poor, and you're gonna get hit with a gas guzzler tax as a result. But if you buy this car, you don't care. Rear wheel drive only, of course. As I mentioned, choice of two gearboxes, six automatic or six manual, and you have a standard magnetic ride control. That's an active, adaptive suspension in all ZL1s. 
Check that out down there. That is an electric power steering rack. Some consider that heresy in a muscle car. And by the way, this is a sequential port fuel injected motor, not a direct injected motor. It is relatively low tech. So what do you say about a car with 580 horsepower, treads this big, a huge supercharged six plus liter V8. What am I going to tell you? I mean, it's fast and it's a hell of a lot of fun in kind of an unrefined way. I don't mean any disrespect to Chevy, but this car feels like a very nicely finished sledgehammer. It comes on hard, it's big and chunky, it's got some kind of rude manners, though I'm not an expert at driving it in just a couple of days I've had it. And overall, it's got a grin factor to it that is exactly what this car sets out to do. It's about having fun. It's about visceral. It's about red-blooded. It's about Americana. The power is ungodly, as you can imagine. Look, I'm on a tight autocross track. I can't begin to utilize what this car can do. And that's one of the fascinating things about it. You can buy a car now for about $50,000 that does so much more than you could possibly exercise. This is a wonderful era for those who love horsepower. The ride on this car, as you can imagine, is firm, but it's not the most jarring I've driven. It's actually fairly comfortable, certainly at speeds like this. And it's got one of the great exhaust notes in American driving today. our ZL1 should you be so inclined. 56.3 delivered, but that also includes a $1,300 gas guzzler tax. You're going to pay for your fun in this guy. Now, the options to take it further CNET style are limited, as we talked about. Sunroof, $900. Bucks. Purists are going to say no. Then we've got another $1,100 to get the premium sound with the dual powered subs, in case those exhaust tips aren't music enough to your ears. The only other option is around $1,200 for the automatic transmission. I can be convinced on automatics these days, but not on this one. It's kind of muddy, and I really want to drive the manual.